dear friends, this is a new year, 2021, and I wish you God's blessings as we now have the opportunity to gather together virtually and celebrate the gift of Jesus Christ given to us by the Lord who loves us and clearly tells in Holy Scriptures that He indeed loves us all. Blessed New Year to one and all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Your robes are all fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by the leading of a star, you made known your only begotten Son to the Gentiles. Lead us, who know you by faith, to enjoy in heaven the fullness of your divine presence. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Old Testament reading for the Epiphany of our Lord is from Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around, and see, they all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant, your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, the wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the Son of Man in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, Though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery, hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, which is also text for today's sermon according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, and the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, and the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them, until it came to rest over the place where the child was. 
When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. This is how St. Matthew the Evangelist depicts the visit of the wise men from the East, or the Magi, as some Bible translations use to say. Isaiah, the prophet of God, 700 years before it happened, said, A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. The Christian Church calls this festival the Epiphany of our Lord. January the 6th is the day we observe it today, the Epiphany of the Lord. 
we close the Christmas season and then the Epiphany, Epiphany season will begin. In the days of the ancient church, the Christians celebrated the birth of Jesus when they had Epiphany. It was later in time, in the fourth century, when the Pope decided to have December 25th as the day of the birth of Jesus. The Eastern churches, the Orthodox churches, still emphasize the importance of Epiphany to the extent that in countries like Greece, January the 6th is the day they celebrate the birth of Jesus as he comes to save the nations. Sometimes people think that Epiphany is less important than December 25th, Christmas, but both dates are relevant. We see on December 25th, the birth of Jesus, when the shepherds came to worship him and he was announced by angels. And when we see later, but still in Bethlehem, the wise men, the Magi, coming from the east, maybe from Babylon, to worship him, then we see that Jesus comes, as God promised, to save the nations, Israel and the nations in general, all peoples. We celebrate Epiphany because we are grateful for the gift of Jesus. We receive him, the one who comes in the name of the Lord, to redeem the Gentiles, the Jews, the Israelites, and the Gentiles. We read in today's epistle, St. Paul, talking about God sending him to the Gentiles, to the nations, to proclaim the good news of Jesus, the Christ, the promised Messiah, so that the Gentiles are also heirs with the Israelites, with the Jews. To celebrate the Epiphany of our Lord Jesus Christ means to see what the Word of God teaches about Jesus coming to save this world. We, we see the prophet talking about darkness covering the earth. This is what Isaiah writes. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Yes, this is Jesus coming to bring the light, the light which is the eternal light. There are people who don't feel comfortable saying that they live in darkness. How well, possibly? This is the 21st century. Think the progress of science, modern technology. Yes, we agree that mankind saw progress throughout the centuries. But spiritually speaking, we are still in darkness, and it is only God who can bring the light to shine and show us his love, his mercy, his salvation. Therefore, to celebrate Epiphany also means to say, yes, I am a sinner, yes, I need God's salvation. And this, dear friends, is what the wise men, what the Magi did. Mysterious men coming from afar. They knew the word of God. They knew the truth. And God led them to see the newborn king. We don't know everything about them. But what we see is, as the prophet announced, the nations will come to Jesus and people will see in him the 
light. In the beginning of the Christian church, because the vast majority of the Christians were Jewish people, some thought that Jesus is the savior of the Jewish people, that's it. But this is not what God reveals in Holy Scripture. God clearly says his son comes to save the nations, people in general. When the birth of Jesus was announced by God and the shepherds came to worship him, then what is it that we see? We see Israelites, Jewish people worshiping God. But when we see the Magi coming to worship Christ, then we see the Gentiles as well. What is it that we learn from the wise men? that it's important to examine the scriptures because the scriptures testifies that Jesus is the Son of God. It is important to hear the Word of God because the Word of God reveals the truth, teaches us the way, and the way is Christ our Lord. The wise men not only examined the scriptures, they did what God taught. This is what we Christians would do and will do, namely to hear God's word and live according to the teachings of our Lord. The wise men were blessed by God. They were led by him to see Christ, to worship him, to bring presents. And this is what we also learn, to bring presents. When we appear before Jesus, not with empty hands. And what did the Magi do? They brought gold, incense, and beer. And we know that such gifts mean that Jesus is king, king of kings. And also that Jesus is the one who will be one day nailed to our cross to die and redeem mankind, to take upon himself our sins, our iniquities. And we see when we celebrate Epiphany already the cross, waiting for Jesus one day as God had in mind so that he would offer the perfect sacrifice and we would receive, as we receive by faith, forgiveness and life. Bring therefore your gifts to Christ Jesus and such gifts are a repentant heart, lament the sins, repent, but also rejoice when you see Jesus because you know that now salvation is present. Now salvation is offered, is given to you. When we see here in the gospel reading today, the verse 11, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And the verse 10 before says, when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Joy because you see Christ, you see salvation, you see the Son of the living God, your friend, your Redeemer. We also see people doing things which were wrong. We see King Herod. King Herod didn't want to believe. He never had in mind to worship Jesus. He only considered his kingdom. And he had in mind to kill Jesus, but it was not yet the time for Jesus to be killed by men. Later in history, as God reveals in the scriptures, it would happen, but not by the hands of King Herod. He tried to 
do something basically evil. But God was with the baby because the baby is God, is God made men. And God wanted to see him live in the number of years that he should live and then being offered as the sacrifice. We see in the final verse of the gospel written, and being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. And we know the life of Jesus. We know how he lived his days in this world. And we rejoice because he is the one who now bestows upon us the gift of eternal life. And with the Magi, with the shepherds, with the Christians, Jews and Gentiles, we serve God as his children, heirs of his eternal kingdom. And we trust the promise of God that his children are protected and guarded by him. And this is how we begin this new year of 2021, still surrounded by what is happening, and you know what I mean, but trusting that the star, and Jesus is the star, will show us the way and will walk with him in the assurance that we are never alone and that he blesses us today and always. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble and hearty thanks for all the goodness and loving kindness that you bestow on us. We praise you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, we bless you for your boundless love and the redemption of the world by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. We implore you to give us a right understanding of all your mercies that our hearts may ever be deeply thankful and that we may show forth your praise with both our lips and our lives. Direct our lives in ways of holiness and righteousness all our days that we may enjoy the testimony of a good conscience and the hope of your favor. Be sustained and comfort in every time of trouble. And finally, be received into your everlasting kingdom through Christ Jesus, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.